It's 7 p.m. on Sunday, July 28, 2024. This is the last Sunday of July, and we'll be in August next week. And just a quick weather report. It looks like um, there's a couple storms between now and September. And uh, the highest we're going to see probably this year is 98, 99 degrees. And that's only for a week in August. So summer is pretty much, according to the weather forecast, we pretty much survived summer. It's not going to get much hotter. Uh, we'll get a little bit more rainfall. But nothing to write home about. So not going to be a very dry summer, it looks like. So Here they all come. There's a couple sheep down there. I'll leave it open. Well, maybe I'll go visit them and see what they're up to. So, <laughs> looks like the ram is following a ewe closely. Right now it's about uh, 88, 89 degrees with 60% humidity. Not hot, but quite humid. Uh, there's a cool breeze blowing from the south. Um, sun's low, so it's not as hot as it is when it's up high in the sky. And we've got, you know, cloudy skies, especially towards the west. Um, I don't know what you call that, but in the evening it kind of cools down. Uh, the afternoon is the hottest part of the day. I didn't come out here in the afternoon. I kind of shirked my duties a little bit. But uh, it'll be fine. I did move the sheep, I think, on Thursday evening. I don't know why, but my camera cut out the video there. So I'll probably try to splice it together before I upload it. Anyway, yeah, so um, the evening cools down. And we get some wind movement in the evening, too, which makes it nice to be out here. Um, and when the sun's low, it just isn't as hot as when the sun's up high in the sky. Uh, the sun's more bearable, but hats are less useful when the sun's low. So, you know, let's get these sheep to move. Hey, guys, let's go to the new row. I can see Mr. Bull is moving on his own. Yeah. I was uh, checking out the condition of the cows and the grass. Everything looks great there. All right, come on, little guys. Come on, let's join the rest of the flock. I, uh, when I had the two rams, I said they might try to split the herd into two herds, and it looks like they might have done that. Where he's taken a few of the ewes for himself. So he's probably not eager to move the sheep together. You know, that's what ruminants do, is they make their own little herd during breeding season. Well, these... These sheep are not always open, but um, I, one of the concerns I have is even if I keep to a strict breeding schedule, there's a good chance that they might not breed when they're supposed to. You know, but I think the Dorper breed is pretty good for breeding when you want them to, um, especially if I keep the rams off of them until it's time. We'll see what happens. If it turns out I can only breed them once a year, then that so be it. Right. Come on. <laughs> right now, my chief concern, the only thing I really care about is uh, that there's plenty of grass. Um, I probably can't make it to spring with the amount of grass that I have. But I at least want to make it till uh, mid or late um, autumn. So what I do is I make a quick estimate of how much I can graze the animals before I run out of grass. And right now, I'm planning to graze the entire southern half um, about 200 feet a week, more or less. And since my field is 2,560 feet long. Divide that by two, that's 1,280. So 1,280 divided by 200, that gives you about six weeks. And so if we start um, basically the first week of August and 
we graze for six weeks. That puts us in mid-September. So that's just the southern half. And then I might be able to get another cycle out of it, um, especially if I increase the, the row size from 200 feet a week to 400 or something like that. And uh, so if I decide to do that again, that'll give me another three weeks. That'll put me in October, right? So um, this southern half should be able to maintain me until October, uh, maybe through the first week of October, which is good. That's uh, plenty of grass, uh, plenty of space. And um, then after October, then I can start grazing. I think I'll do like, you know, maybe 100 feet, um, 200 feet a week, and just go through the entire pasture once. So that's uh, 12 weeks. And 12 weeks would put me um, three months after October, which is January. Maybe I can do that again and then get myself into April. And if the forage is low, um, but I'm confident there's plenty of grass and I might just roll out hay for them. Um, I might also cut the rows short so that they don't graze part of the field. Or I might just skip some scum rows or something like that. And, uh, you know, depending on how much grass there is. The goal, the goal in the winter grazing is a little bit different than summer grazing and spring grazing. Everything's different in each season. So when I, when I think of winter grazing, I'm thinking um, just trying to keep the amount of hay that I have to feed down. And if I come out of winter in January with my grass like, you know, half an inch tall, um, I found that that's, that's okay, right? But that said, like when the grass starts to grow in March, I can't touch it. I have, the, I have a period of time where I really need to let that grass rest so the grass can grow strong. And then about mid-April, I can start the spring grazing cycle. And the grazing cycle in spring is all about rush, rush, rush. You know, just cover as much ground as you can. Um, get that spring grass while it's sweet. And you're not going to get two passes because it just takes too long to do even one pass. So by the time you're done with the first spring rotation, it's mid-May. And that's when you start having thoughts of summer. And the summer grazing is more about just the production. You know, just churning out uh, grass, leaving plenty behind. Um, keeping plenty of ground cover. Um, autumn is a little bit the same, but we don't get much growth in autumn. So autumn is more about survival. And then winter is just about making sure the animals um, survive until spring, right? Without damaging the grass too much. So that's kind of my strategy. Um, everything pretty much dies in winter. There's not much growing. And the autumn growing cycle is really not that great, right? So I'm not looking forward to tons of forage in autumn. So. Um, that's kind of the thing that I, that I care about most is how much grass do I have and how long can I go before I need to, to consider feeding them one thing or the other. So it looks like to me, I have plenty of grass. I'll be able to go all the way at least till mid October without running out of grass. And that's even if nothing grows, right? But there's a good chance we'll get some rain in September and August. And then, so by the time we get to mid, um, by the time we get to mid, um, Oct October, we've already seen some regrowth, you know, and then probably December, midway through December, late December, that's when it kind of shuts down. And we just wait until uh, March, and then we wait. <laughs> that ram was explaining to Rami that he's not welcome. Uh, so <laughs> he's giving him signs to stay back. <laughs> Poor Rami. His competition, right? Anyway, so that's... Um, that's what we do. That's what I'm doing. That's my plan. Anyway, guys, have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.